Hi everyone, Amir here, also known as One Falcon, and I am back from E3 and wanted to share with all of you my Sea of Thieves experience this year, from the briefing to the show floor. E3 was amazing. Rare was back this year with an even greater presence than last year. I didn't think that was possible after the one-two punch of Rare Replay and the Sea of Thieves reveal, but Rare's showing of Sea of Thieves this year was the highlight of the conference for many, including myself. Sea of Thieves had a two-part appearance. The first was a cinematic trailer, which comprised of in-game assets frozen in time, creating a diorama depicting an epic pirate adventure. The trailer's purpose, as stated by Rare themselves, is to portray some of the limitless pirate activities Sea of Thieves has to offer. As the view in the trailer traversed the frozen in time pirate shenanigans, plenty about what the players will face in Sea of Thieves was revealed. We saw some of the items players could utilize from guns and swords to a compass and a violin. We learned about some of the wildlife that would be included in the game, such as rats, cats, parrots, and even sharks. The players were also treated to a tease of treasure-seeking mermaids and a peek at a mighty kraken. This trip around the Sea of Thieves sandbox ultimately gave a glimpse of some of the activities players can look forward to in the game. The world Rare is creating will allow players to fight a pirate skeleton crew, search for treasure in caves and sunken ships, and partake in magnificent ship battles. The trailer was accompanied by a very eerie song composed by the great Robin Bieland titled We Shall Sail Together. The track set an adventurous but cautious tone for the trailer, encompassing the feelings I'm sure we all have during each potential encounter in the game. This vision for Sea of Thieves was a great lead-up to what followed. The second Sea of Thieves feature was a gameplay-focused trailer, and yes, I was in it to my huge surprise. If you have been staying up to date on this channel, you would have learned that I had the incredible opportunity to visit Rare and be among the first to play the game. While we were there, we knew they filmed us playing, but none of us knew that Rare would use that footage to show off the game. So the interesting part of the gameplay video was the picture-in-picture -picture format, where the audience could see and hear the players who were playing the game. This focus on players really showed how much fun the shared sandbox and Sea of Thieves could be, whereas leaving the players' reactions out of the trailer could have led to the audience not grasping the cooperative foundation of the game. And those were our real reactions. I had a blast playing with my crew as we explored islands, learned how to sail our ship, and fought in ship battles that unfortunately led to our demise. The game was just so much fun, it was hard not to be smiling while playing. After being on the show floor and seeing the same reactions from people playing the game themselves, I didn't feel so silly for enjoying the game as much as I did. Sea of Thieves genuinely is a fun game to play. It is as simple as that. So back to the trailer. The amazing part about it was even though it was focused on the players, it still told a story and informed the audience about what sailing a ship with your friends would be like in Sea of Thieves. The viewers learned that anchors would need to be lowered and sails needed to be raised just as the, we did in the video. The viewers experienced having to patch up holes in the hull with my crew trying to save our ship. At the end of the trailer, every person who watched it should know exactly what goes into sailing a ship in this game. With how long the lines were for the demo the next day, it's safe to say this picture-in-picture -picture format worked. Most of the comments surrounding the trailer were summed up to the people wanting to share that gaming experience with their friends. The idea of assembling a crew for a pirate adventure is something many gamers would love to play out. So to the booth. The Sea of Thieves booth was by far the most impressive and immersive booth on the Xbox show floor. Rare had two huge pirate skeleton statues commissioned just for E3 that were stationed at each end of their booth. These skeletons were the most popular backdrops for photo shoots and interviews, of course. There were 15 stations with Sea of Thieves loaded up. Each was sitting on top of wooden planks that had been embedded into the carpet. And to complete the pirate aesthetic were lots of barrels, rope, and small treasure boxes strewn about the booth. To further this pirate immersion, Rare hired a professional pirate band to play tunes from the game and other well-known pirate songs to the gamers in line. If that wasn't enough to get people in the pirate mood, Rare had tons of shirts, pins, and tattoo sleeves to give away. There were three different shirts. Each shirt had one of the three different crew's emblem and title on it. There was one for the Mermaid's Fortune, the Mad Monkey, and the Serpent's Lie. These same crews were also shown in the Game Parade trailer, which was interesting to note. The Sea of Thieves pin was a skull showing off the new logo, and there were two separate tattoo sleeves, one for each arm. Next to the game itself, the most important part of the booth was a rare team there showing off the game. Every rare employee I spoke to and saw was extremely welcoming and friendly. Many were doing interviews right there in the booth, answering questions for people in line, and just chatting with the fans. The amount of interviews with the team out there right now to read and watch is very impressive. You could really see how much passion they put into the game, and they were very humble about how well the game was being received, saying that they couldn't wait to get back to the studio and continue working on the game. The build of Sea of Thieves was very similar to the build I played three weeks earlier at Rare. It was primarily focused on ship sailing and combat, and players were able to play for about 15 to 20 minutes. Though the ship sailing combat is just a small slice of the game, 
It was great for E3 because a huge ship in the demo showcased the game's cooperative nature. To get an in-depth summary of how the ship sailing and combat works on Sea of Thieves, you can check out an article I wrote up or watch a video I made detailing it. I will link them in the description below. Minus the game looking even better than I remember, they also added instruments. Adding an item to the player's inventory like an instrument and a mug of grog over a weapon says a lot about the game. These two items are both great icebreakers for newly formed crews and also have the sole purpose of being entertaining. It's these kind of game ideas that make Sea of Thieves live up to the being the pirate you want to be mantra they have stated from the beginning. There are hundreds of ways for people to play in a sandbox game like this, and players feel useful or get enjoyment out of many different activities. If you don't know what you're doing around the ship, you can just bust out your concertina and play to your crew a tune while they work. Have a long voyage ahead to your next island? Time for everyone to drink up and have fun trying to stay aboard the ship. If these two items are the start of what is to come, then I am very excited to see what other pirate activities we can engage in. Rare stated multiple times that the story in the game will be provided by the players. Each time I played Sea of Thieves on the trip at Rare and on the show floor at E3, I had a different experience and new stories to share afterward. On the show floor, I went on a different adventure with every new crew I played it with, and by the end we all felt like we could take on the world together. The ship was such a great catalyst for bonding with your crew. There was a common goal of setting the sail and overtaking any ship in your way, and to do so you had to work together. Once everyone became familiar with the ship and each other, it was easy to get into a groove and flow as a crew over the ship. It became natural for someone on the ship to run down into the hole and check for holes, and another person to be the eyes for the blinded driver at the helm. This camaraderie made sinking a ship or being sunk a fun experience. If you and your crew sunk a ship, you knew it was because you all worked together to defeat the odds. If your crew failed and sunk to the depths of the ocean, you knew you all tried your hardest and were quickly planning your next attempt. The lack of defined roles or classes also furthered the bonding and sense of community. If someone was at the helm and was getting bored, they could easily switch out who was driving. If the crew was getting carried away at firing cannons, someone could quickly run down into the hole and start repairing holes. You always felt like you were contributing to the crew on the ship, which is very rewarding. Rare has already nailed down the shared world adventure game, what they call swag, they are trying to create with just a small piece of Sea of Thieves. With a ship, grog, and instruments, you can set the foundation for what kind of pirate you want to be. Gamers can be motivated by different things, and Sea of Thieves aims to let you carry out your motivations how you like. Once all the game mechanics and items hinted at in the cinematic trailer have been incorporated into the game, I have a feeling many of us are going to get lost with our friends in it. If you had to describe the Sea of Thieves booth with one word, it would be joyous. There were smiles all around as people played Sea of Thieves. I witnessed one person go from having a gloomy look on their face after waiting in line for three hours to instantly smiling and yelling, this game is way more fun than Battlefield 1, after they fired their first cannon at another ship. One crew would be laughing their heads off about playing instruments while drunk in the middle of a ship battle, while another crew would be cheering as they were successfully sinking another ship. There was a constant commotion coming from the Sea of Thieves booth, and most of the time it was either because someone was sinking a ship or being sunk. In both cases, the players seemed to be enjoying themselves. Something the players also seemed to appreciate was the exploration of the ship. e 3 go was not giving any instructions or let through a tutorial. The real magic came from players on the same ship discovering how the ship worked and how the crew would successfully work together. I heard several times how refreshing it was that there wasn't any hand-holding to be found. Very few games let players figure mechanics out for themselves. What is great about Sea of Thieves is most people know what being a pirate is about. A pirate has a crew, it has a ship, and wants to find treasure. Being placed in a world with a crew, ship, and an open world, players can easily set sail and have a good idea of what they want to do. On the last day of E3, Rare ran out of room for all the awards they had received. With each day at the Expo, there was more buzz around the game. It was definitely the most popular game on the Xbox show floor, that's for sure. At one point, there was a four hour wait to play the game. It has never been a better time to be a Rare fan. The social presence for the company has never been greater and more involved in the community. Rare is constantly doing giveaways online and promoting fan art. There is now an official Sea of Thieves forum and even a store. The game is being talked about by lots of different gamers and not just Rare fans. Given the multiplayer and cooperative aspect of the game, Sea of Thieves will most likely have the largest audience Rare has ever made a game for. Rare fans are interested in the game, of course, but you have gamers who like pirate games. There are Xbox fans, and there are also gamers who are excited for new IP. Then there are the gamers who have dedicated a huge chunk of time into games like DayZ, Rust, and Ark Survival Evolved, who love to play a shared world adventure game with a pirate setting. Sea of Thieves definitely has that rare charm, and is also doing something very unique and different, which Rare is known for doing. If you look at Rare's history, the different genres they have created games for is a lot. Racing, first-person shooter, third-person shooter, puzzle, adventure, 
platforming, the list goes on. This huge multiplayer shared world adventure game is the next genre Rare is looking to tackle, and after this year's E3 showing, they have the foundation for a winning formula. It is easy to see there will be something for everyone in Sea of Thieves. I am so stoked for this game. I have played it countless times now. I've been fortunate enough to be able to do that from my trip to Rare and uh, multiple times at E3, and it never got boring. And this just had the ship sailing in combat. Once those mechanics and items and all the other things they want to cram into the sandbox that they kind of showed in the cinematic trailer make it in, people really need to be worried about losing themselves in this game. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I just wanted to share everything I experienced at E3 this year, tell you guys what it was like for Sea of Thieves on the show floor, and how crazy the commotion was for this game. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more Sea of Thieves news. I'll catch you guys later.